I don't know what possessed me to take on the responsibility of organizing the anti of hormone women. To this day, the forum is still the biggest international conference on women in history. Imagine 30,000 participants, 5,000 events in 10 days. It took 20 months to organize the forum. We organized it from scratch, as it were. We walked the snow-bound streets of New York, looking for office space, buying furniture, hiring staff, looking for money, etc. But that was the easy part. Navigating the political dynamics of key relationships, that was the hard part. The relationship between China and the UN, between China and the NGOs, among women and other women. You all remember the drama. No, in fact, it was a drama series. The first drama occurred five months before the opening on August 30, 1995. On March 30, or five months before, the Chinese government announced that they were moving the NGO Forum one hour away from Beijing to a township called Huairo. In effect, five months before the event, we did not have a venue for the biggest international conference on women we were planning. It was not until June that a settlement between the Chinese government and us was brokered by the UN. In effect, we had two months to assign rooms, dates, and time for the 5,000 events that we were planning. But that was not the end of the drama, or more precisely, the drama series, as I said in the beginning. The Chinese government decided to ask for two pieces of paper for them to grant a visa to anybody who wanted to come to the forum. One from the secretariat and another one from the hotel where the participant was staying. The chaos was now felt on the individual level. Just going to China was a feat. But we managed it, and we managed it spectacularly. It was an amazing conference. And the impact has been tremendous. And now, 25 years later, we find ourselves reflecting once again on what we need to do. I believe we need to never forget we came out of a political movement. Personal is political, remember? So, well, gender mainstreaming allowed us into believing our advocacy had somehow succeeded. We now know that gender equality work is never done because power is at the root of equality and we can't slack on that one. The feminist scholar Carolyn Hilbrun says it best. Power is the ability to take one's place in whatever discourse is essential for action and the right to have one spark matter. Yes, the powerful women's movement that we showed in Wairo and Beijing calls us once again to exercise the right to have our part matter. In this world, so very badly in need of transformation. My most memorable experience during that conference is, of course, watching a Filipina side over the entire proceedings of the conference. And everyone knows and should know that it was Patricia Likwanan. He was very cool, very fair, and had excellent negotiation and mediation skills. Impacted experience had for you, but it opened up the whole global network, sisterhood of, uh, of uh, women's advocates for me. So for me, that was the impact that it had, you know. Well, sisterhood, the global sisterhood was open to me because of this Beijing conference. My one memorable experience is coming across a group of women from Lanzhou City, where I spent more than a month in 1991. We were all so excited and couldn't stop smiling and patting each other since they knew very little English and they knew very little Mandarin. 
But that moment captured to me the spirit of viral, of joy and camaraderie that transcend race, ethnicity, language, and ideology. What was the impact of Beijing Wiro Conference to me? The marches, discussions, and networking with colleagues and friends from different parts of the world reinforced the idea that we all have a role to play in bringing about what Gabriela called for, genuine equality, sustainable development, and lasting peace. Whether we're teaching, researching, organizing, consulting, or delivering services to women. Who was I most excited about meeting? Hillary Clinton, not because she was the first lady of the United States then, but because she was an outspoken advocate of microfinance. I remembered Ao Sang Siu Kui, I could never pronounce her name. The, the, she just got out of prison uh, for six years and she opened the Beijing Forum on Women. And it's just very dramatic. We really get to be impressed by all the struggles of other women, the Mongolian and Tibetan women mm -hmm. in the big tent. And during one break, they demonstrate, you know, did some demonstrations. I thought that was very brave of them. So many, um, you know, um, marginalized and vulnerable women. And I think that has stayed with me. That, in fact, in my department, I have a gender, climate, and social well-being program, and that will become now part of the climate and disaster. Uh, Resilience Transitional Research Program. The Beijing Conference was very good. It made us gain lifelong friends. At the same time, lifelong commitments. There are two things that I could not forget. One is when the Muslim women invited us Catholic women to have a procession bringing the Blessed Virgin Mary. Wasn't that wonderful? And we really did it, you know, they came to us and, but they were the ones who initiated it. That was the wonderful thing. The Muslim women were the ones who initiated it and invited us Catholic women to have a procession of the Blessed Virgin. And you know that had a repercussion on me because afterwards I had this uh, uh, the cooperation with the, with the Muslim Association in, in UP, you know. So we, we continued that kind of association of Muslim women and, and Christian women. The second one is there is that... that um, we were all in one place. We were, I think, all in black, and we had hold hands, but it was a silent protest. That was so overwhelming and awesome. I enjoyed uh, seeing Irene Santiago because uh, when she was the one who organized uh, the, that viral thing, I think. And she and I, we actually are co-founders of Filipina. So, so with, with uh, Remy Riken and Ging Deles. For me, there is this overwhelming sense of unity and oneness with so many women, I think they talk about 30,000 women all over the world being one with us in Beijing. So I knew that uh, conceptually, but it is one thing to have it in your thought and one thing to really feel this unity and the strength of the women all over the world and really having one goal, and that is the empowerment of women. And Beijing had excited the women's movement. Um, so it wasn't just being there, it was part of that whole preparation and looking forward to it. And knowing that that was important, that that was going to be really a milestone for us. So for me, for me, that was part of it, the preparation, the excitement, the women coming together, Filipino women. Uh, what actually I had brought there was um, uh, a, a small booklet on uh, what was probably the first uh, international women's colloquium on peace that we had gathered uh, women working on the peace processes in conflict areas, in conflict areas of the world. And we came out with a booklet that, that, that in, in, in the whole preparation, we were thought of something we would bring to uh, Beijing. We may have been, in fact, ahead of our time already in terms of peace. I mean, the, the, 
the International Women's Peace Movement was talking about um, nuclear war, stopping war, but that, that concern about the situation of women in actual conflict areas and women in conflict areas take, um, claiming the agency to do something about their situation. Uh, I think at that particular time, that was not in the workshops that was there. I didn't plan to meet her, but it was really exciting to have been able to join a, a workshop um, with Betty Friedan. Yeah, the, the impact was of a significant number of Filipino women, of women activists being there and sharing that experience and knowing that a document, a very important document, was given birth in, in, in Beijing in the official platform.